in Christ? Have you called out to Christ to fill you, fill you with the Holy Spirit? In Matthew 7, 7, 8, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And that's something that's available to each and every one of you. You have the opportunity to humble yourself and seek out God. Many people have that decision to make at some point in their life, and this could be that time today. I hope to be that pebble in the shoe that you'll hear my words. You'll start to think about those questions. You'll start to think about God. You'll start to think about putting Him first in your life. As it says in Matthew 7, verse 13 to 40, 14, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many, many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life, and only a few find it. Because you see, if you're truly seeking after God, he will, he will find you, He will make Himself available to you. Many people discover this God in this way because they're willing to humble themselves and pray to God. And you don't have to go before a big church with a lot of music. You can humble yourself. You can pray to God in your car. You can pray to God in your house. And he will make himself known to you. He will reveal himself to you. And you can start to see life change. You can start to fill your life with goodness. You can start to fill your life with mercy and grace and patience and peace. For these are the gifts that God wants for you. God wants you to have victory in this world. God only, not only wants you to have victory in this world, but he wants to have a personal relationship with you in the next life, the eternal life. And he's calling out to you. He's calling out to you in so many ways. He's calling out to you in the Bible and his word. He's calling out to you through street preachers like ourselves. The hope that you will change your ways if you are on the broad path, that you will come to Christ, that you will seek out the narrow path, and you will walk away from things that don't serve you. There are so many temptations in this world. There are so many sins. There are so many things trying to pull you away from the message of God. It's amazing how many times when we street preach, strange sounds will suddenly occur. Or people will get excited and worked up. And yet if there was another preacher preaching about Islam or another preacher preaching about Hinduism, nothing happens. And yet when the gospel starts being spoken, strange things start to occur. Amen. The devil is a liar. But God is the truth. Amen. Jesus Christ is the truth. He unapolog unapologetically says that he's the truth. This is not what Buddha claimed about himself. Buddha never claimed to, to be the truth. He said at the end of his life he was still seeking after truth. And certainly Muhammad didn't think, believe that he was the truth. The kings and the philosophers didn't say they were the truth. Only Jesus Christ said he's the truth. If you're a seeker after God, it makes sense that you would want to find out if that is true. You would want to make sense, is Jesus Christ a madman? Or is he who he says he was? Is he truly the Son of God? And if he is the Son of God, what does that mean for you in your life? Is that true what happened this past week where they celebrate Easter weekend? Did Jesus really die on a cross, was resurrected? Because if that is so... It would be wise of you to live your life in a way that honors him. Because that is a supernatural event that took place 2,000 years ago. That's a supernatural event that has changed the world. The Western civilization is a testament to those type of changes. 
It's changed people's hearts. That's what happens when you give your life to Christ. You have a heart of stone, but you, become, you begin to get a, a heart of flesh. You change the way you see the world. You change the way how you act with your neighbors. You change the way how you love people. I know this for myself because before I got serious about my faith, my love was short-lived. It was simply about what could that person do for me or what could I get out of it. It was a, a temporary pleasure, a temporary seeking. And there was no long-term thinking. There was no really caring about that person to see what do they, uh, what can I really truly do for them? Do I really want the greatest good for them? And the answer, sadly, was I, I wasn't too concerned about their future. I wasn't concerned about their afterlife. I was concerned about my own feelings, my own thoughts in the moment. And that selfishness corrupts a lot of folks. I'm not the only one who's experienced those things. There'll be people walking these streets who can relate to this story in one form or another. You may have different sins than me, but ultimately it's the same. It's seeking after a selfishness that simply, in the long run, will not serve you. And that's why we're out here today is to call you home, to call you to your creator, to bring you back to the narrow path where you can walk righteously, where you can walk for higher virtues, to higher values, that you can become a more deeper spiritual person, walk away from the, the base carnal things of life. In Christ, we're called to rise above the flesh. We're called to rise beyond our simple bodies and beings and to become better men, become better women. And that starts by honoring God, that starts by praising God, that starts by ignoring the false messages that people try to float out there into the, into the world that God does not exist. How foolish, how foolish to think that, that we just happenly random here, how foolish to think that the, the complexity of this universe, the complexity of ourselves was just a random accident. And that's what we call you today. Today We call you to think about those deeper questions. We call you to look into the historicity of the Bible, to look into the message of Christ and see if it truly resonates with you. Because we think if you're truly seeking after the truth, God will show you the truth. You will abandon the ways of simplicity. You'll abandon the false songs, the false messages of nihilism, of scientism or any other ism that isn't going to serve you well and certainly isn't going to serve you in the next life. So many people believe or deceive that this natural world is all there is despite many signs to the contrary. How naive to think that we just randomly came here and we only have 70 or 80 years and that's it. If that's all there is, there's not a purpose to anything. It doesn't matter with your good or bad. It doesn't matter if you're, you're respectful to your neighbor or not. There is no purpose to any of it. But I tell you here today that there is a purpose to your life. God is patient and long-suffering toward you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you, and he's seeking you out. He wants to comfort you. He wants to be the rod and staff that comforts you during your difficult times. He wants to be your, your protector and your shield. And let's face facts, there are all types of hardships in this world. There are all types of things that can happen. So much noise has been made about the COVID-19 pandemic. And the fact is, it's one pandemic in many in the history of the world. There will be other pandemics. There will be other crises. And the question is, are you prepared to tackle them? Are you prepared to handle them? Are you seeking after the Lord? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you doing the things that will bring you closer to God so when that time of difficult times come, will you be willing to stand up to it or will you fold? Will you be pulled away? Will you be like the birds that taken the seed away in the parable of the sower? Or will you be that soil that is ready to receive the seed, that's ready to grow, it's ready to, to, to grow in that relationship with Christ, it's ready to become that light? And that's what Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is the light. It says in John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light being Jesus Christ, and the darkness being the wickedness and ignorance of the world. And if you are sinning, if you're not living by God's standards, you're giving into that. You are a son or daughter of disobedience. 
and that should concern you because there will come a time when there is an accounting, there will become a cost that you will have to bear. That's why we're here today to warn you in the hopes that you will make the changes in your life to live righteously because you do not have to be a son of disobedience. You do not have to be a daughter of disobedience. You can be righteous. You can be holy. You can be pure. You can be seeking after God. You can be falling forward because for some of us, it's going to be a struggle with certain sins at times. It's going to be a process. But we do have an advocate with the Father in Jesus Christ. We do have an advocate that loves us deeply and wants the greatest good for us. And he's calling each of us home. Much like many of you, you might have a loving parent when you went away and you played in the backyard. or went away to a neighbor's house. You left the light on. That light is a beacon home. And that's what Jesus Christ is for each and every one of us. He's calling us home. He's calling us to faithfulness. He's calling us to be a light to others. As it says in the book of Matthew, we're not to, if you're a Christian, not to keep your light under a bushel. It is to shine, to be an example to others. People should see that you're separate. And that's what it means to be holy. It means to be separate and apart from. And so you can't live with the world. You have to walk away from its practices that ultimately will not serve you in the long run. And I'm here to tell you today that this is possible for anyone. Some people think that they cannot change. Or they feel that they're hurting from some sin or some, something they did. But I'm here to tell you today there are people every day all across the world who give their life to Christ. Who begin that life change. They become new people. They become a new creation. They cast aside the old man. And their life is forever changed. And that, can, that same joy, that same peace of mind, that can be available to each and every one of you. Don't mock the power of the gospel. Don't mock the word of Christ. It is what gives us hope in the world. For without Christ, there is no hope. There is no meaning. Ultimately, the world is reduced to relativism where there are just likes and dislikes. But such things have never moved the world. Such things don't build wonderful societies. Such things don't build and transform better people. What you need is a source that calls you, changes you from the inside, calls you away, away from dark desires, calls you away from the carnality, calls you away from the, the double-mindedness, and instead calls you to a life of righteousness, calls you to a life of love. Because when you're filled with love, and I hope my words come across to you as compassion, because I'm excited about the word. So I'm here today to share the gospel, which each and every one of you, to hope that it may move you, it may strike you, it may cause you to think about some things you hadn't before. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, sister. For I tell you this, there are people who have seen their life change. I've seen people who were down on their luck, frustrated, lonely, suffering, solitary, upset with what life had given them, but then in a moment transform their lives by giving their life to Christ and filling their, they're filling their lives with joy and peace, giving them a purpose, giving them a way to na navigate the world and reject the things that ultimately do not serve them. And that's available to each and every one of you. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter your ethnicity or color. You can become a Christian, you can become closer to God. All it takes is for you to have humility. And now that may be a strange word here in the West. We're a prideful nation, but our past and our history, we were a humble nation. We were a Christian nation. And we can be again. Each of you can become a Christian if you've backslidden. You can seek out the Word of God. You can seek out a deeper relationship with your Creator. And all it takes is an, an ounce of humility, a moment to think, a moment to, to get down on your knees and to beg God to come into your life. We're a week removed from Easter weekend, celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A lot of Christians take a lot of hope, and they should on this powerful message. Because with Jesus Christ dying on the cross, 
cross. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he became sin for us. And then in Galatians 3.13, he said he became cursed for us. God did a powerful thing. God converted curses such as death and sin, and he converted them into a blessing for each and every one of us. Jesus Christ paid the debt on the cross for us so that we could receive eternal life, so that we could be washed clean of our sins. So as it says in Romans 3, 23, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all done wrong by God's standards, which are high. Some people may have done this unknowingly because they have not sought after God. But I know in my life when I sinned, I knew without question every time that I dishonored God with my actions. And the reason for that is because I have a heart in your heart as a conscience that tells you when you're doing right and wrong. That's why you know when it's wrong to steal. You know it's wrong to commit fornication. You know it's wrong to lie. And each and every one of us knows these things deeply. God bless you. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, Jesus was not the only one on the cross. There were two other crosses with him. Two thieves were were being crucified as well. And it reads in Luke chapter 23, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly, as I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. You see, the two thieves had a choice to make just like you have a choice to make. You can choose to mock Christ. You can choose to mock the gospel. Or you can choose to receive that. You can choose to humble yourself like that thief on the cross said to remember me. That I will repent of my sins. That I will seek after you. And God will remember you in paradise. God will allow you into paradise. And see, that's the ultimate reality as people choose whether they want to live with God or live apart from Him. God will grant your choice. He will grant your wish. That's something each and every one of us has to decide. And you have to decide whether you will honor God. You will have to decide whether you serve the Lord or you serve creation. Do you serve righteousness or do you serve sin? That's an individual choice that you will have to make. The faithfulness and righteousness of your grandmother will not get you into heaven. Even though they're hoping and praying, many of you know this to be true. But it will not get you into heaven. It's a choice that you have to make on your own. Only your decisions will determine your fate. Only your decisions where you will determine where you live your afterlife. And there are many messages sent out in the world today. One message is that there is no afterlife, that this is all there is, a natural state. And the reason why this is promoted is because there are people who want to believe that if there is no God, that they can act as gods. But we see that message, we see that foolishness in the Bible, we see that with Adam and Eve, where they were deceived thinking they would eat this fruit, and they would receive this knowledge, and they would be as gods. But as the story goes, we know that did not work out well for Adam and Eve, and it doesn't work well for people here today. We are not gods. I'm sorry to tell you this. On our best days, we make mistakes. We lie. We cheat. We hurt people's feelings. We say things we shouldn't say. We simply are just not equipped at that level. We are finite beings, whereas God is an infinite being, an all-knowing being that knows all we have done. But God loves us. God gave us breath. He knew us before we were knitted in the womb. As it said in Jeremiah 1.5. And he wants you, he wants you to live holy for your own good and also to honor him. 
but he gives us free will, and that's why each and every one of us has the choice. You can choose to reject this message and continue on in your ways. You can choose to live wickedly. You can choose to hate on your neighbor. You can choose to be selfish, but you don't have to. Just as you can choose to be selfish, you can choose to be selfless. You can choose to love your neighbor. You can choose to love your enemy. You can choose to love all those around you. You can choose to love the homeless people here. You can choose to ignore them. You have the power, bro. The you power. do. What's that do to say? That's sir. No, man. You got to have the power, man. The power of what? No, you don't have. You haven't got no power in, in, in what you're saying right now. You're not. You're not reaching out to the people. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Are you a believer? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk. What's your name? My name is Brother John. What's your name? TJ. TJ. Yeah. And when did you come to Christ? Uh, I just. Yeah. You got to talk to us. Nah. I mean. You sure? Yeah. I'm just gonna just talk. I'm just. Yeah. No, I just seek, seek him into my own. Well, tell me, me, tell me what, what's your testimony? How do you come to Christ? Uh, just keep it casual. I seek with it. Uh, as, a, as a Christian, you shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. It's important because you, you never know. I mean, if we're, we're here, as my brother was telling me today, we're here to, to concern about people's souls. So it's, it's an important matter. I know that you're a young man in public and can get shy. But it's saying that on the moment you should be able to, to share your testimony. You should want to, and you should want to do so. Yeah. Okay. You got somewhere to go. We're gonna talk later. All right. Okay. All right. God bless you. All right. Praise God. And the gospel is a powerful message. That's why there are so many out there working to suppress it. So many people trying to silence this message, trying to turn down the volume, trying to turn off the amplifiers, trying to distract from the message of the Word of God. But as Christians, we're called to go out in the highways and byways, in season and out of season, to share this Word with each and every one of you. Because it's important and it matters. Many people are walking through life, they're playing with their souls. They're not giving it the, uh, the due uh, devotion and worship it deserves. They're not giving it the serious thought of reflection. And we're here calling you to consider these things deeply because they matter. Your life matters. There is a point to your life. You're not just randomly going through life. The choices you make do influence others. If you choose to cut someone off on the highway, you are going to have an impact on their day. If you choose to lie, if you choose to cheat on your spouse, that's going to have an impact on their life. Not only is it going to have an impact on their life, it's going to impact on your life. Because you'll know deep down that you did wrong. It's going to corrupt you. It's going to change your, your uh, mind state because you're going to have to justify and rationalize why you did those things. It's going to start a terrible process. However, with Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can walk away from any sins you may have. You may in the past have been a fornicator. You may have been a drunkard. You may have chased after money. You may have overindulged in drugs. You may have done any number of sins. But with the power of God, you can become a former fornicator. You can become a former drunkard. You can become a former drug addict, and you can do that because where men fail, what seems impossible for man is, a, is possible with God. Because we have our own limitations, but God has no limitations. God truly is the, truly is the embodiment of love, as it says in 1 John 4, 8. And God loves each and every one of you. He wants the greatest good for you. He wants you to live righteously because he knows unrighteous things do not serve you. Sin, though it may be pleasurable for a season, as the Bible says, it will go away. It will pass. For all people who, who abuse alcohol or drugs, they know there's a, a diminishing return to that high. They're always having to push the ante up a little more just to kind of get that same feeling, that same rush, and it disappoints. And the reason it disappoints is because it was never made to truly satisfy. 
It's a short-term joy. It's a short-term distraction to distract you from your life, distract you from your problems. In contrast, contrast to the Bible, if you build your foundation in Christ, if you seek after God with all your heart, He will change your heart. He will change your way of thinking. He will give you strength. As the Bible says, God's grace works best in weakness. So many times in the Bible, God lifted up people who on the surface, though the world would judge as weak. David, who became King David, was the runt of his litter. There was no reason really to think that he would rise to such stature. And yet God chose him. God chose him to take on mighty Goliath, who he slain. Then King David came on to be one of the most powerful figures in the Bible. And then there is Gideon as well, who God chose to lead against the Midianites. Gideon was a weak man physically. He was the least in his family, the least in his tribe of Manasseh, and yet God called him. And even mighty Moses, the one Moses called with the Ten Commands, he called to lead his people through the wilderness. Moses had a speech impediment of all the people to choose. God chooses the one with a speech impediment to lead his people. And I say these things to tell you, to let you know, no matter how weak you may think you are, God can make you strong. Doesn't matter how short you are, God can make you tall in his power and his word. As it says in the Bible, you to cry aloud and lift up your voice like a trumpet. And so never think that your station, your status, your uh, lack of money in your bank account or things that have happened to you in your past disqualify you from a relationship with Christ. God knows about every sin in the world. There isn't a sin that you've done that God would not still love you. In the parable of the prodigal son, and there's so many prodigal sons, I was a prodigal son, but God comes running to the son when he's willing to repent. God immediately restores the son. He immediately puts on the best robe, puts on his ring, puts on the, the sandals, and that's available to you. So many of you may have backslidden. Many people have, have walked away from the faith. Guess what? God still loves you. God has always loved you. God will always love you. As it says in the Bible, I am the Lord thy God. I change it not. He's always loving you. He's always hoping that you will come home. He's always hoping that you will be like the prodigal son and return and reject your foolishness and say, I've had enough of the world. I've had enough of the nihilism. I've had enough of the scientism. I've had enough of any other ism you can think of. And he's saying, come back. Come back now. And the sole reason is love. And I assure you there's nothing more powerful than love in the entire world that may sound cliche, but the love that I'm talking about here is an eternal quality, a love that transcends time, not just simply a feeling, not just simply a moment of a passion, but something that goes beyond, something that is truly seeking after, that truly, truly wants you to walk in victory, that truly wants you to seek after better things and to cast aside anxiety, to cast aside bitterness, to cast aside jealousy, Instead, fill yourself with wonderful things. Fill yourself with love and grace and joy and mercy. For that is what God wants for us. God wants us to walk in victory. God wants us to be the light and extension of the example of Christ. And isn't it funny, isn't it interesting that everyone loves Jesus Christ? Even unbelievers love Jesus Christ. Even atheists you think this and that about Christianity, they still love Jesus Christ. And why could you not? How could you not love a man that was so selfless, who cared for the needy, who cared for the poor, who cared for the sick? And we see his example in Christians throughout history. We saw it in the, in the first century when Christians used to free slaves at the auction market because they were called to believe that you should love your neighbor as thyself. We have hospitals and charities 
almshouses, all is a testament to that belief in Christianity that we are called to love our neighbor as thyself, that we are all called to care about the least of these. We're all called instead to, to, to ignore the invisible people, but instead to look upon them and let them know that they are people, that their life does matter. And it matters because they're part of God's creation. It matters because they are made in the image of God. And as your life has value, so does theirs. And we see that example. We see that example in Christian charities with the Red Cross and the Salvation Army, all with a deep devotion to that idea that we are called to seek out others. We are called to love them and look after them. And that happens because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will look upon situations in a different way. I know this for myself. I know that in my past, if I drove up to a, a street corner and there was a homeless person on the corner, maybe a, a young man with a, a dog, and he had a number of tattoos, I would think less of that man in my past life. I would think, why should I give my money to this, uh, this person? He'll just waste it on drugs or whatever else. And I was proud, that's so sad to say, but I was proud of those thoughts. I thought I was wise in my own eyes. But the reality is when I gave my life to Christ, when I, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I started to look upon that situation differently. I saw that, that young man and I wondered, what about him? That young man could have been my son. And if it was my son, I would want somebody to reach out to him, to call him back, to call him away call him away from drugs, look after him, seek after him. Because that's important because he is, he is part of us. And how we treat the lowest of us says a lot about, says a lot, a lot about us ourselves. That's why Jesus says to look after the least of these. And the Bible, it says, is how you treat the least of these is how much you love Christ. I want to repeat that again. How you treat the least of these shows how much you love Christ. For Christ died on the cross when we were all sinners. Christ died on the cross when we were all enemies of God, and that's what we are when we sin. We are an enemy of God. And Christ still... Knowing all this, still took upon the pain, still took upon the, the torture, still was nailed upon the cross for us. And that's why it matters. That's why we do the things we do. That's why those Christians built those hospitals. That's why they built those schools. That's why people gave their lives to share the Bible with each and every one of you. Because they knew it was important. They knew it was life change. They knew it was transforming. God bless you all. God bless you. And that's something that's available to each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. Get a little water. Oh. It's pretty good. How's your day? You enjoying the fountain and everything? Oh, that's wonderful. Uh oh. Thank you. You want to hop on for a little bit? Throw one and make a wish. That's right. I want to try to make one. Mm -hmm. You want to hop on for a bit? Another one. Whoa. I want another one. Uh, Is it louder this way or should I point it to the thing? Here we go. Oh, you're welcome. God bless y'all. Like a gospel trap. Oh, God bless you. Love you, sir. Oh, praise God. Oh, amen. Oh, God bless y'all. Are y'all from, from Dallas or? Yeah. Okay, nice. Oh, good deal. Yeah, we. this is kind of a new place for us to preach. He's preached here a few times. Well, I'm, he's going to preach, so I'll, I'll let him go. But, but yeah, we're trying out kind of a new spot. We we're I'm sure you saw us up there earlier. So, uh, how is how is Garland? Do you know if there are some good places to preach down there? Or? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I have okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe like, but now All right. Well, I'll check it out. All right. Well, God bless you. Y'all have a good weekend. Nice to meet you.
or something. Gospel tracks. Anyone like to have one? Here we go. Look at this plaza. Oh, this is funny. Gospel. Uh, oh, got you. Oh, you gonna say? I was gonna say it's funny. Evan was talking about Pegasus the other day. A Pegasus. It's like a mythical Who creature, was? like a horse. Evan. Oh, Evan. Yeah. Free gospel tracks, sir. God bless you. Free gospel tracks. Anyone like to have one? In John 14, God says, yep. Let your heart, let your heart be, not be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. If you believe in God, Jesus says, also believe in him. Because Jesus is God. Amen. Free gospel tracking. What's that? Uh, let's let's turn it so it bounces against the wheel, the, uh, the building. It's all the way turned up. Uh, there now it is. That, there that was probably why. Yeah. Is, is that better? See if it works better. Lift tilt it up. What do you think? It's because when I, I turned it I turned it this way because I was listening to it over there. Okay. And when. When we had it pointed this way, I couldn't hear it over yeah. there. Yeah. Well, it works. If you bounce it off the wall, it'll get some, some bounce back. It's never going to be What's perfect. If you bounce it off right here. Well, I don't know that it's going to be that strong, but we can, we can try it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're the speaker. You get it how you like it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hello everyone, today I want to read to y'all some holy scriptures from the Holy Bible, God's Word. In John 14, Free gospel says, track here, anyone like that? also believe in me. This is what Jesus says, he says, you believe in God, also believe in me, because Jesus is God. This is why he tells you. But he also, God also says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have Free told you. Here. Anyone like to have I go to prepare a place for you. God has a place prepared for us, and it's called heaven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God, God has heaven prepared for us. To all who believe in Jesus, I like your shirt, ma'am. And I tell you, Jesus loves. Here we go. Three gospel track here. Anyone like to have one? Here we go. Yes, but what God says right here is that He prepares a place to His believers, and it's called heaven. It's a glorious place. Heaven is a glorious place. We cannot comprehend how heaven will be, but I tell you, heaven will be so glorious. It, was, it will be so perfect. Because I tell you, this world is not perfect, but heaven is, and God has it prepared for his believers, for his saints, for his children. But the question is, are you going there? Are you going to heaven? Oh, I hope that you are going there because it is a real place and God has prepared it for you. But continuing it says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also. Yes, Jesus says that he's gonna come again 
and he's going to bring us to that place called heaven. Jesus bring us to track here. Like and that. take oh, us to heaven God. with him. He's yep. preparing it right now. He says we're going to get mansions in that place. How about you, ladies? Oh, oh yes, it's track. way better than this uh, world. Because this world does not care. This world does not care about us. This world is ruled by Satan, the God of this world. Don't don't let him be your God. No, don't let him be it. Don't let Satan be your Lord. No, don't do it. Don't let the devil be your master. Don't do it. But see what God says. See his commandments and follow his commandments. Because Jesus says, if you love me, you'll follow and keep my commandments. And he said, the greatest commandment is to love. Oh, yes, do you love God with all your heart, mind, you like and soul? like a gospel track, sir. Yes, that's what he says. Love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, everything. Give it all to God. Give it all to him. And he will not forsake you. He is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. But also continuing in verse 4, it says, Where I am, I go, and you know not. And Thomas said, unto him lord we know not the way and jesus said unto him i am the way the truth and the life and he who come no one can come to the father but by me thomas a follower of jesus asked him god what's the way what's the way to enter into heaven i want to go there this is what Thomas said to him. And this is what Jesus said to him. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can go to the Father except through me. Yes, Jesus says this. And I tell you, Jesus is true. Everything Jesus said is true and is coming to pass. Oh, yes, his words are holy and perfect. Like his words are life. He gives life. Oh, God bless you. The scriptures say that Jesus is the word. He is the word that came. Three gospel tracks here. Anyone Jesus like that one? born of a virgin. Three gospel tracks here. Three so gospel tracks. Anyone like to have one? Oh, yes. And I you, How about you, sister? So oh, God bless you. Jesus was the only perfect person on this earth. And you know what he did for you? He shed his perfect, precious blood for Free you. Free gospel track here. Because of God love. Bless you. Oh, yes, love. The love of God. The love of Jesus. I didn't have no father growing up. I didn't. But I tell you, I have my father in heaven. He was watching over me the whole time. Oh, I thank God for watching Free over gospel me. Track here. Like to because have I didn't have no earthly father, but I had the greatest father in heaven. And he wants to be your father as well. Yes, he wants to be your father. He wants to be your father so that you can be with him. Yes, God is a father, but also he's a judge. He's a judge as well. Beware. Three gospel tracks. Anyone like he to have one? How about you, man? Yep. Oh, you're welcome. How about you, sir? There is no darkness in God. Come out of the darkness, God says. Come into the light. And I'll tell you who the light is. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. He's the light that shines in darkness. And nothing can go against the light of God. Amen. Light. Darkness cannot defeat light. Oh, I pray that you get heed to this word. I pray that you get heed to this word in Romans 12. If you don't have time to listen to it right now, go, go and study Romans 12 and see what God has said. He tells you, he says, I preach you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable like to, have one. to God. Yeah. Oh, God bless your you. body, God wants yeah. your body to be holy and acceptable unto Him. Oh, 
Your body's a temple. I pray that your temple is not filled with earthly. Free gospel track here. Anyone yeah, like to have one? Free gospel tracks here. That can break that depression, that can break that fear, that can break those evil spirits off of you. Oh, yes. God has all power. His spirit, his spirit is everywhere. I pray that the spirit of God is living in you. You need the living spirit in you. Thank you, Lord. 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 In verse 2, in Romans 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. This is what God tells you, to not be conformed to this world and its ways. Because the devil rules this world. Don't be conformed to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let the Holy Spirit renew your mind. Free gospel okay. tracks. Anyone okay. like to have one? Uh, God bless y'all. Yes. This this it's okay. It's not. But I tell you, God is everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. Yes, God is eternal. Free gospel tracks. Anyone like to have one? He loves every single one of y'all.